Tell me a bit about the 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 background to the the Archibald winning painting, which was of Charles Wilson. Well, he um, he was my barrister. Yeah. When um, I got a got arrested for armed robbery with a mate of mine, mm. um, about two weeks after I think winning the Sawman Prize, so it was mm. sort of like it was kind of like. A rise, not a rise, but it was sort of going, you know, like up a hill or yeah, rising in a, in a, at a point, and yeah. then and sort of just getting to the, a point where you know there was like a big sinkhole and you just dropped into yeah, it. Yeah. It was like that. It was just such a sudden, you know, it was like speeding down the highway at a hundred miles an hour, and yeah. then without seeing a sinkhole, you just go straight into it. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Yeah, and that sort of um, so I got into trouble, big, big trouble, you know, <clears throat> um, went to jail and I had to get legal representation and I didn't really know anyone apart from Charlie. Yeah. Who, who knew what, like, yeah, who, who kind of knew a little bit about the law enough yeah. to kind of, for me to ring up yeah. or get my girlfriend at the time to ring up and say, look, Nigel's in, in big trouble, man. Can you help him? And he just went, yeah, I'll help him, you know? And so he kind of, we how, did you, how did you know him before that? Well, I'd met him through Adam. Oh, okay. You know, we'd yeah. sort of socially mixed, but my family knew his family in oh, okay. Albury when I grew up. Oh, right. My dad actually used to sell his dad um, fish. Because oh, right. they, owned, they yeah. owned the Water Street Hotel. Yeah. And I think Charlie used to work there, like yeah. behind the bar as a kid. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, but my dad used to catch um, Murray Cod. Yeah. And sell it to Charlie. Charlie's parents and they used to sort of put it on the menu like fresh Murray cod. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of um, strange that I it, it sort of you know reconnected this sort of thing, yeah. this sort of old connection resurfaced and and you know in a way it was the perfect it was the perfect kind of person to help me because I felt no matter how loose and kind of strange and offbeat he is as in person like he was very good at what he does you know mm. um and it was hard to separate the man from the lawyer the barrister like the man from the barrister it's hard mm. to co you know connect i'll oh, bring them to like unify them and and yeah. think how does this how it work yeah you know? i mean the guy is kind of you know almost mythological in australian you know Culture. I mean, he's very well known. Yeah, I mean, and he's very talented. Yeah. Like he's not, you know, he's he's well. He's got a very broad sort of interest base or whatever. He's into yeah. film and writing yeah. and um, photography. He's into everything, pretty much. Whatever he he's sort of whatever pops up, he's he gets into. It. Like he's got a lot of energy. Mm. Like unbelievable sort of stamina um, to do what he does and so yeah he represented me during my mm. the chart he, he sort of dealt with the charges or he took on the charges and on my behalf and um, went through the whole sort of sentencing process and ended up you know being like getting seven years as a sentence um, mm. Sort of did that, and but while I was doing that, I appealed the sentence, you know, yeah. um, because Charlie sort of found a lot of inconsistencies in the sentencing sort of procedure that he thought needed to be like looked at, and yeah. and and kind of like you know, if if the if the legal system, if the justice system is going to be fair and and unbiased, like there was a lot of a lot of sort of particular events that happened that just blew his legal mind out of the water yeah you know it yeah. baffled everyone he said to me once you know it wouldn't have mattered who you had like you could have had god on your like god represent you here and, mm. and was still you still would have got the result based on how how just the dynamic of the 
procedure, sentencing procedure. So, yeah. but he, um, anyway, I got locked up, you know, mm. um, and I appealed the sentence and that's when, I think, you know, when it went to the, yeah, the Supreme Court or whatever it was, Charlie, um, like form the opinion that he, you know, I needed someone who was going to be a lot more thorough and and you know run a really fine sort of tooth comb over everything to to really get the best result. Like yeah. and so he introduced me to Philip Bowen, who's a great man and awesome um, legal expert and. So yeah, the appeal was successful. So uh, yeah, I got out, and then um, it wasn't long after that I painted Charlie. Did it seem like a natural decision then? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I was like I spent so much time like leaning on him yeah. and relying on him. It felt like he was sort of like um, yeah. It felt like I was he was piggybacking me, mm. and then. In some ways, it felt like when I got out that I kind of needed to piggyback him yeah, for yeah, a while. Yeah. Because it seemed like nothing, you know, when you get so close and then, you know, you form a friendship or a bond, but it was really just a professional, it was really because of his job yeah. and my stupidity, you know, that brought us seriously together. So, but once it's sort of, when you join like that, things have to come to an end in a way. Like, I still mm. keep in contact with him, we're still really close, mm. and, you know. But it, the intensity can never be the same. Yeah. Unless you, it's built on something else. Yeah. And I wanted to put the legal and my experience, you know, that kind of, you know, whole thing, I needed just to bury it. Yeah. And in some ways, like, it's hard to bury it and bury Charlie with it. Because yeah. he's such yeah. a, I mean, he was such a, he's such a nice, um, person to still be able to ring up and talk to about anything and you know he's just a really yeah he's cool like when you won the arts world in 2015 i think it really attracted a lot of media attention because there's a, a kind of a, a recognizable sort of narrative around that you know with being it's almost like a redemptive story that you've got you know the, the, the inciting kind of incident you know and the yeah. media loves stories that people can yeah. already understand because they're pre kind of digested in a way. Do you yeah, know I, mean? I know it was like yeah. I mean, you know, it was strange because I wanted to kind of put it to bed. Yeah, because but it, <laughs> yeah, like I actually, you know, I, in some ways I did the painting as a kind of a um, really as a sort of an ode to say a, 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 a goodbye. Yeah, or, you like know, like into the whole yeah, thing, that's yeah. right, and it just opened up the book yeah. again. Yeah, like yeah. and it just opened it up in a way that. You know, didn't like. A, it's not that I wasn't prepared for it. It's just that I didn't want to have to rehash everything again because the yeah. you know the more you think about things of the past, like the more the past becomes prep like real. Like yeah, it's sort of like yeah, you become. It's like you get stuck in the past and you yeah. live. You're reliving that all the time. Did you feel like it? Because I mean, there would have been <clears> lots of media interviews and that kind of stuff. So <clears> you, <throat> did you feel like in that kind of aftermath of the winning of it that you were having to kind of you know, replay this whole kind of thing again. Yeah, very yeah, much, very yeah. much. And it was like really tiring. Yeah, I can imagine. Because, yeah. you know, you just want to start every day anew. Yeah. And there's always, because even, you know, coming back to Newcastle from Sydney, once I got in, into trouble, like, yeah. and then once I went to jail and came back out, like it was just, you know, people just look at you very, in a very strange sort of way, like. Yeah, like you're dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah really dangerous. Wow, and yeah. they, you know, even going and getting a coffee, they're like, people yeah. like go, oh, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, it was sort of, yeah, yeah. you know, you become very self-conscious when you leave the house. People just think, you know, that guy might, um, you know, be careful or whatever, yeah. you know, and I was seeing a girl, at the, like, when I got out, I started seeing this girl and her, She's got two kids, and the husband, the, the father of her kids, was like, "Man, he's dangerous. Mm. Don't I don't want him anywhere near the kids." Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, like, he, he doesn't. He didn't know me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I can understand like his concerns because I'd be like that. Yeah. Too. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. So, but it, 
took time for that to sort of dissolve maybe, but yeah. I think it was still, it's very easy for people to use against you if they want it. Yeah, that's true. Like yeah. they just pull it out and just say, um, you know, for their own benefit. Mm. Um, and I just usually let them do it, let them go. Like it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't really have a, it's sort of, it's their problem Yeah. in a sense. But I mean, I think in the, in the longer term, because I mean, you know, it's not just a, a win of the Archibald. It was, a, it was a pretty incredible work as well. Yeah, so I think that's where, striking. I mean, Sorry. you know, the fact that it had this sort of backstory or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that you could have the, the craziest and the most awesome or interesting backstory, mm. but if people don't respond to the painting, yeah. Um, then it's just an interesting and awesome, crazy backstory. But the thing is, I, you know, I've been painting for a long time and it just happened that there was that painting and there was that story at that time. Yeah. And they both sort of went hand in hand and they were just such a, it was like, you know, the glove fitted kind of perfectly at that time. And yeah. that's, I think, what happened. I think one of the really striking things about the painting as well is that it's pretty much the entire bottom half of the painting is black, mm. except for his hands. And I mean that <clears throat> people, you know, you probably have, have had this for the last sort of three years, people going, the hands! You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, tell me a bit about, you know, the because the hands really are the focus of the... Yeah, you know, I mean there was, the was portrait, a lot of... You know, yeah, I mean there was a lot of... Um, I mean, you know, it's kind of multi, in some ways, when I do any painting, there's all these different elements that are brought together. Yeah. And for me at the time, I was, you know, I was reading, you know, Kafka's Metamorphosis. I was, I had so much experience watching Charlie fumble through court hearings and mm -hmm. like drop things and not like miss picking up like yeah you know forget bringing important documents along <laughs> and so there was this kind of thing and it's always part of his persona isn't it it is like, but you know, know when your life's on the line yeah, that persona yeah. <laughs> is sort of like you just think like you know you're not you're sort of not paying for someone's persona yeah to be to, <laughs> like for that aspect of their persona to come out at a particular moment and so there was an element where his hands almost look useless and they look yeah. very stick like like almost like insect like yeah but then the you know there was that other side where he, he you know he did open up and he did sort of take take on like embrace me yeah in such a way that um i think his hands were kind of you know they were important they're that actually important to what he does yeah um well they're important to everyone like if you don't have hands you kind of you're mm. pretty limited but, um, so there was, yeah, there was that kind of idea that they're, they're big and generous, but they're, they're also kind of, they look useless and, and not quite mm. human, mm. but you know, they look, he looks almost, they, they give him a kind of a giant, a, you know, a, a giganticism or whatever that mm. kind of does fit his persona. Yeah. And he's big, he's a big guy. Yeah, well, he's I was really thinking the tall. perspective of it is he looks like he's towering above you. He's yeah, yeah. He's, you. It's almost like your eye level is kind of actually almost like you're sitting down and he's standing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's strange because he was always, you know, you see a lot of the back of him. Yeah. And his wig and. Yeah. And I did think about painting the back of him at one stage. Yeah, yeah. But then I thought, like, I actually was going to paint him his whole, phys fit, like, his whole body and with shoes and everything. And, and then at the point, there was a point where I thought, no, like it wasn't, it sort of compositionally, it didn't work. And then I was gonna paint him sort of like at the waist, just at this, in this sort of like river of oil, you know, like just sludge. And he yeah. was almost going to be walking out of this sort of sludge creek yeah. at night. Yeah, and so I was gonna, you know, I was thinking. I can see it's almost there, you know. Yeah, and I was thinking about having, yeah. you know, a bit of bit of a moonlight sort of backlight hitting him, and and him just walking out of this swamp like a zombie. Yeah, but it was too much. Like it was just too much. Yeah, like there was too much there, and so I did 
paint a lot of that out, took it all out, and I just thought, you know, that's sort of enough, really. Yeah. Just three, and plus it's kind of like, if you look at it, I mean, it is that whole, you know, that whole sort of compositional device as the sort of triangle. Yeah. You know, like, which is kind of a Renaissance sort of math. It's a kind of a very idealistic way of looking at form and in space, but it was just something that uh, I could just, I just liked it. It just seemed to kind of be odd enough to accept and but not too odd, you know. Where did, where did the title come from? Um, Judo House Part 6, The White Bird. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Um, well, The White Bird was kind of like a reference to a dove, you know, being like a, a messenger of hope and peace yeah. in a sense. Yeah. And then the that's in brackets, so it's kind of like a subtitle. But then the Judo House Part Six, I think it is, or five, maybe I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. It's really. kind of like a. Um, well, I just started years ago doing these series of, like, literally just painting these Judo House models. Yeah. Um, yeah, like models of. Japanese architecture that was specifically for practicing judo in, you know, and so it was just something that I, yeah, I was into architectural painting at the time, and it just sort of there was something very animated about these these things, like mm. that they they kind of look like cartoons. So it just started off at that point, and so I just called that that body of work judo house yeah and i just called every painting that oh, okay so that's actually in a way that's actually part of a larger body of yeah 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 so that was but that was kind of like i think in 2005 or six or something yeah and then i really just sort of used that main title judo house and then i gave it each body of work i gave a sort of a a, a number like a numerical kind of classified it numerically in a sense yeah as a kind of another chapter like yeah. so in some ways i was thinking about and so in each so they're all called under the the umbrella of the title yeah. they're all called that yeah okay. so i didn't want to get involved in giving each work a title because i kind of felt like it's only one chapter in a kind of a broader body of work and, and really it's the same body of work mm. like it's all the one it's all one work like all, every work I've done is really one body of work yeah and I just only want to distinguish between each sort of slight shift with by a subtitle and a number like in terms of its chrono chronological kind of progression in a almost like a novel you know you have chapters of one two three mm. but you know it's the same book so yeah, it's a liter maybe more of a literary device that allowed me to step away from getting too caught up in the sort of the poetics of titling work and getting bogged down in trying to imbue the work with meaning, mm. a particular meaning, like a specific meaning. Yeah, so um, it's kind of enigmatic, but allowing it to be sort of... Yeah, and, and it allows my work kind of to be inter like interchangeable, like I can... Yeah, it just allows things to be more fluid if everything has the one title under that one, in that one body of work. And it doesn't mean that they're all the same paintings. It means I can unify everything with that one title. Mm. Yeah.